So as the Metropolitan Police Force reels from the conviction of serial rapist and sex offender PC David Carrick, two serving officers have told ICB News there's still widespread misogyny and racism. The officers, who have decades of service between them, say it's time to speak out against the toxic culture within the Met. They describe hearing of female officers who've been raped by colleagues and how their complaints have been ignored. They also recount the arrogance and power how white officers feel if they ha they they feel they have over people from ethnic minorities, and they also criticise the police federation, which represents rank and file officers for holding back change. We interviewed the two officers before the details of David Carrick's crimes emerged, and they asked to remain anonymous. They spoke to our reporter Antoine Allen. Can you prove you're a serving officer? He says he was once proud to join the police. You're putting your job at risk simply being here today. Just how difficult a decision was it? It wouldn't happen through the media team. It would be edited in order to make sure that the truth is expressed. Then this is the way to do it. Alongside a fellow officer, they have broken ranks to speak to me about the Metropolitan Police's toxic culture. I see the strong sense of arrogance and power they feel they have over black people and ethnic minority people. Because there's too many allowances and too many excuses being made for the officer's behaviours for their wrongdoing. After working for the Met for decades, these black officers have made a series of serious allegations about racism and sexual abuse. And they say it's the body that represents the rank and file officers that is holding back the nation's biggest police force. It can't go on. It really can't go on. The slow pace of change has taken a mental toll on this officer. I nearly killed myself as a result of discrimination. You know, the shock of the fact that I pledged my allegiance to the organisation, but when I looked for their allegiance, they were nowhere. What do we want? Justice! What do we want it? Yeah. The police's fatal shooting of unarmed black man Chris Cabber to the strip search of 15-year-old schoolgirl Child Q just two of the many incidents that both officers say has made them consider quitting the force. Confused, angry. Uh, the reason I say that there is report after report coming in where people like us are being killed. You know, people like us are being stopped and searched more than any other group. And our children are being strip searched, you know, without, without adults with them. It, it's not nice to hear it occurs. And their allegations of abuse within the Met go beyond just the treatment of black people. Last year, Wayne Cousins, a serving police officer, kidnapped and murdered Sarah Everard. This week, an elite officer, David Carrick, admitted dozens of rape and sexual offences against 12 women across two decades. Crimes that the officers I spoke to say mirror allegations inside their police force. I have heard firsthand from female officers that have been sexually assaulted or raped by other police officers. Shouted down on, belittled, and when they've complained, it's fallen on deaf ears. And they've been forced to work with the same officers again. It's not uncommon. The numerous high-profile failings by the Met have resulted in the force being placed into special measures. According to these officers, there's a significant barrier hindering progress. Do you feel that the Police Federation protects white officers over black officers then? Yes. Absolutely. They both claim the Metropolitan Police Federation has an inbuilt bias against black officers. It's majority white officers in the Federation. So it's being able to go and get that information from those officers in the Federation to protect you. I mean, there's things that have been done, they are wrong. Yeah, but ultimately, if you've got an organisation or group which protects wrong, that can't be right. There needs to be more scrutiny over the Met Police Federation because they're the ones protecting these officers. 
You just pushed that door into my head. You know I didn't mean to do that. So. This body-worn camera footage shows the arrest of youth mentor James Watkins. Despite James's work with the police building better community relations, he was arrested and he says illegally searched after he brushed against a police car door. All charges were later dropped. And even look, watching it back now, it's quite traumatic actually seeing what happened that day. There's a big gang mentality within the Met. I've even heard police officers say, you know, we've got the biggest gang in the world. Um, so it is a really us versus them mentality. More than 230 officers are currently awaiting results into allegations of sexual assault and 43 officers are on restricted duties due to allegations of racism. And there's been a lot of talk of bad apples. What's really stopping the police get rid of these bad apples? It's the culture. It's the fact that the police stubbornly refuse to accept that institutional racism exists within the service and therefore it confuses everybody and it allows certain officers to continue doing what they, they do within a safe space. The Met Commissioner Sir Mark Rowley has vowed to restore the public's trust and confidence in the police. These men say they want to help, if this time the Met are ready and willing to listen. I mean, that's a list of some very strong allegations there, Antoine. So what has the Met and the Police Federation had to say? Yes, I mean, very strong allegations. They, we put these directly to the Met Police Federation. They dispute all of the claims by the officers and say that the workforce is diverse and the Federation reps all of our colleagues. They go on to state that, similar to defence lawyers, the fact that we support police officers who pay into the Federation in a non-judgmental legal entitlement are part of a fair and due process. Now, we also spoke directly to the Met Police Service and they had this to say. There's no room for racism, misogyny or any form of discrimination in the Metropolitan Police and we've been working incredibly, incredibly hard to make sure we root out any officers or staff who show any signs of these kinds of behaviours. It is unacceptable and I would encourage both of these officers to come forward and reassure them that we will do everything within our power to make sure they're taken seriously and their complaints are investigated. Now, these officers spoke directly to ITV News because they believed they could speak without being held back or censored, and they wanted other officers to use their example and speak out as well. Even today, I've had messages from officers who have listened and watched and messaged me about some of the allegations that they've faced themselves, so. Okay, Antoine, thanks very much. Well, you can read more about Antoine's report and find details of how to get in touch if you're affected by any of the issues at itv.com slash news.